so uh, I'm Mark Hill, to repeat. Um, I'm from uh, Green Leaves, which is, as with just about every other Leave group, uh, uh, a renegade from uh, the political party that we normally support. So in that sense, we're not very party political. Um, we're Green members, Green supporters, and others on the left. And campaigning for a Leave vote at the referendum, um, but from a centre-left point of view. And we're particularly here to show that really anybody can subscribe to the idea of leaving the European Union, and indeed will be doing so. If this panel were to be truly representative of the way that things are going in the polls, 41% of them would be uh, for leave, 41% of them would be for remain, and uh, uh, the, the missing 18% or so would be undecided. Um, it's actually uh, very finely poised, and if you do the maths, you can see for yourself that um, there is simply no way that all of that vote that is for leave is right of centre. It simply can't be mathematically. There have got to be a large number of people who are voting against the recommendations of their political party, Labour, Scottish National Party, your party, my friend, the Liberal Democrats, and uh, obviously my own, the Greens. Um, most of the political parties, in fact virtually all the political parties, are telling us that we should be in the European Union. But nevertheless, people are voting essentially against their political parties, with the exception of the Democratic Unionist Party in Northern Ireland, and uh, of course UKIP here, which is actually still a relatively minor party in UK terms, despite the attention that it gets. So, our intention, if nothing else, is to remind you all that you are taking this decision collectively as citizens. This is not an election. You are not voting as people of your political party. The party you normally support is irrelevant on this occasion. You're voting for what you personally think is right for your own situation and particularly the next generation. And I think a lot of the answers that you've heard tonight show the difficulty of explaining these issues in tactical terms. A lot of it is very long term. Whether you think you value the European Union or not, I'm sure all of us would agree, thinking about it, the effects are likely to be for the long term, particularly as we don't get a vote of this magnitude very often, 41 years since the last one. Now, our key argument as a group is that those that want us to stay in largely want us to do so from an argument claiming that reform is possible. And our view is simply that it isn't. We have been in this body for so long now, we understand its mechanisms, we understand its sense of direction, its own sense of purpose of itself. It is a centralising, it is an elitist, I'm afraid, my friend, it is an undemocratic body, certainly in the sense that we Brits mean it, because it doesn't allow accountability, direct accountability of the key office holders. Um, if nothing else, ladies and gentlemen, think about the consequences for um, those seeking to uh, migrate here. Think about the consequences for those in the developing world that face the protectionism that lies at the core of this body. Think about the unemployment, the mass unemployment amongst youth that this body has created, particularly in the Mediterranean countries. And think about the decimation of the public services that are now threatening the very lives and health of people in Greece and other countries affected by the institutional <coughs> austerity of this body that we are being asked to endorse in two weeks' time.